I can only imagine from a historical standpoint, we are in a very interesting time right now. Politically and economically, there is a lot going on. Three countries appear to be vying for ultimate superpower status, the United States, China and Russia. Two of these countries hold the lion's share of the world's nuclear power, guess which two? That's right, the states and Russia both own thousands of nuclear warheads and both countries have made snide comments that they could both destroy one another within minutes. Indeed, when the two nations last very nearly came to blows in the Cold War, both had plans for mutually assured destruction. So really, the question isn't so much about what if Russia won, but what would it take to win and how much would really be left of either country if World War 3 involved nuclear weapons? Let's say whatever transpires transpires and somehow Russia ends victorious. It would be a tainted victory as the death and destruction would be widespread, far worse than in World War 2 which claimed 75 million lives. Although in a very sick way, the world will finally know what devastation nuclear war would cause, a question with such a scary answer that is dictated a slightly grudging peacetime for over 70 years now. Firstly, if Russia won a world war, regions around the already sprawling landmass may be in danger of annexing. Crimea has already been swallowed and things probably would not be looking so good for the Ukraine. It is hard to predict what the exact impact of a Russian win would have within Europe, but there would certainly be a shift of mood with the added power. The European Union would likely feel a lot of pressure and tension, and may be worried how an all powerful Russia may affect their politics. On top of that, it is likely that many European countries will have been drawn into the war on America's side, for instance their strong ally the United Kingdom. If any bombs fell on European soil, they may be feeling pretty injured and insulted, calling for decades of tension in Europe yet again. So what would happen to the United United States. It's extremely unlikely that there would ever be any kind of Russian social invasion. I would highly doubt that Russia would want United States land as it's huge and very far away from their own. It is possible that some Russian troops would occupy areas of American soil, however this is unlikely as I would imagine the absence of any Russian military in the states would be a very key point for surrender. Each time Germany has lost a war, the country has undergone a lot of political upheaval and this would likely be the same for the United States, which would find itself broken and divided. The country would need the right kind of leader to bring them together once again, if not there is a risk that the states could seek individual independence. For example, there have been whispers that the state of California would like to be its own nation. While these ideas seem far fetched now in peacetime, after a harsh war, anything is possible. One thing seems for sure, if America did lose the war, going from what we know from similar situations in history, it is likely that they would lose all of their overseas land. This would include Guam, the Virgin Islands and the Northern Mariana Islands. This would further decrease the United States global strength. A few more burning questions. If Russia won World War 3, what role would China have had to play and what would be going on in North Korea, a country vocal about its dislike for the USA? Who knows what would happen with the hermit nation, but things would certainly be interesting between China and Russia, two powerful countries that share a border. As with World War 2, World War 3 would be awful whoever won or lost. Each time nations come to blows, it sets the stage for the next conflict. If we erupt into World War 3, it will have already laid the foundations for World War 4, and who is to say how long we would keep biting chunks off one another until we decide that we need a more reasonable solution. So, America has launched missiles at targets in Syria. Some could say, same story different day. If the decision from Trump seems rash, Remember that war is nothing new for the United States. As the figures so infamously announce, America has been at war for 93% of its history. If this is nothing new for the states, then how could it possibly lead to multiple outbreaks of war big enough to be deemed World War 3? Well, the problem here is that tensions have been building globally for a long time. As Russia grapples to be a superpower, it provides support to Syria in the Middle East. Syria has been at war with its own people since. 2011 and has been the cause of more ISIS recruits than ever, with the jihadi terrorists utilising the chaos to gain an upper hand. The West had previously acted cautiously when it came to meddling in Syrian affairs, not wanting another Afghan style war on its hands. However, President Bashir al Assad has undoubtedly committed war crimes when he used chemical weapons on his people. How long can those committing war crimes be ignored by other world leaders? 
In support of the US actions, we have the UK, Canada, Saudi Arabia, Australia, Japan, Israel, Turkey, Jordan and Spain. Not in support per se, but completely understanding, we have Germany and Italy and indeed France. Against the strikes however, we have Syria, obviously, their allies Iran and, here's the problem, China and Russia. China, let's not forget, supports North Korea. What an absolute mess. Now we know where everyone stands, let's address the fact that this question is two pronged. We're asking, has Trump started World War 3? Now before we even talk about Trump, we need to look at whether World War 3 is even a likely outcome. This is an imagined scenario, but this is the way it could pass. Now. So, America has launched missiles on Syria and has the backing of some pretty major countries. If Assad continues to use chemical weapons on his people, this could provoke more strikes on the Syrian government. If this reached boiling point, this could cause aggression between Russia and China on the states and their allies. In a direct knock on effect, this could be the excuse needed for North Korea to begin their much discussed and much practiced acts of aggression on South Korea, ultimately sending much of the world into war again. Only this time we have nuclear weapons and really that isn't something that anybody wants to experience. Is it fair to say, if any of this did happen, that Trump would be to blame? Would the history books, if there was anyone left to write them, say that Donald Trump started World War 3? Well, no. Trump's move was bold and scarily quick, but that is irrelevant to this question. If we could point the finger of blame at anyone if World War was triggered, it could very well be President Assad of Syria and again, Kim Jong Un of North Korea. We do not have time in this video to go deep into the ins and outs of Syrian and Korean politics. Here are the key points of what led to the Syrian chemical attacks. Assad assumed power in the year 2000. Assad is the son of the previous president of Syria, with the same family ruling the country for decades. While elections did take place, many were concerned with corruption. The way Bashir al-Assad took power was kind of like if Donald Trump had ruled America for 30 years and intended to give power down to Eric when he died, but unfortunately, Eric died too, so in the end the job goes to Barron, who never really thought he was going to have to do it in the first place. Doesn't sound the most transparent and democratic, right? Well this is what a lot of Syrians thought. Thought, and in 2011, they held a peaceful protest to call for more democratic rights. This is when Assad committed his first war crime as he ordered his government to fire on peaceful protesters, killing hundreds and imprisoning more. Violent suppression and peaceful protest is a war crime. Since then, Assad's regime has been officially linked with three other war crimes, including chemical attacks on civilians, specifically with the chemical sarin. The United Nations, of which America is a key player, has a responsibility to act against war crimes. China and Russia are also part of the UN. If these latest airstrikes do lead to world war, which I really hope they don't, it would not be fair to pin the blame on Donald Trump, who was acting with the support of many leading world nations in the response to a clear and abhorrent use of war crimes. At this point, the current tensions can be pinned on Syrian President Assad and his inability to peacefully govern his country, not to mention the fact that the civil war he sparked has been a huge huge fuel to the devastating fire that is ISIS. On top of that, the displacement of millions of Syrians are the result of his civil war. Further tensions again can be directly attributed to Kim Jong Un in North Korea, having carried out five nuclear tests. America is quick to respond and perhaps Trump's intervention is rash, but his actions are effect rather than cause. Something worth a quick mention before we end this video, people may be wondering why Russia has such a vested interest in Syria, and why they're not condemning Assad's actions? Well, the answer has three letters, oil. Which again, does somewhat muddy the waters for America's motives too. Could America's response to war crimes be tangled up in a desire to further destabilize the country in an attempt to support the proposed Qatar-Turkey pipeline? Well, there is enough there to make up a whole new video. So, has Donald Trump started World War 3? Well, no. He acted out against war crimes that had so long been ignored. He has also threatened to treat further nuclear testing from North Korea with force. You guys may have watched our video, Who Would Win World War 3, where we touched on the key players, but we wanted to go more in depth to get a sense of how global and catastrophic the event would be. So far, there is building tension between the United States and North Korea, as well as the United States and Syria. President Trump has dropped bombs on Syria in response to a chemical attack used 
by Syrian President Assad. North Korea have made it clear from their propaganda videos that they would love to strike the United States if they could, and the United States has responded to missiles and nuclear tests by increasing their military presence around the North Korean peninsula. Of course it isn't as simple as the United States versus Syria and North Korea. Both of these comparatively small countries have huge superpower allies. Because of oil interests, Russia protects Syria, and for similar political reasons, China is an ally to North Korea. Yikes. Alone, North America will not want to take on both Russia and China. Both countries grappling for world superpower statuses would have reason to want to fight the US if they had to. Russia wants control of oil in the east, and China is economically grappling for trade, with Trump's Buy American ethos greatly angering them. While Syria and North Korea are not equipped for war, Russia and China have made their thriving military arsenal known. At this point, China is remaining neutral, but if war was sparked, they may get in on the action. The question is though, would China want to align itself with Russia? Also anti-USA are Iran and Bolivia, with both countries strongly condemning Trump's actions following the Syrian missile strike. It is possible that these countries could be involved in an anti-American alliance. But who would be fighting with the United States? They do have some very strong allies. South Korea are allied with the United States, who have been assisting their protection against their angry neighbours in North Korea. South Korean territory would be crucial in the fight. The same would likely apply for Russian enemies, the Ukraine. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau of Canada has stuck true to the historic partnership between Canada and the United States, lending his support for Trump's actions against Syria. Canada would undoubtedly fight on an American side if war ever broke out. Also in alliance, we have the United Kingdom, France and Germany, along with much of Europe. In the Middle East, it seems that Israel, Saudi Arabia, Turkey and the United Arab Emirates are in support of the US. As is Australia. Israel actually has its own vested interest, with tensions already existing between them and Iran. Finally, despite being enemies in World War II, relations with the Japanese are very good with the states right now, and America may expect their backing. Currently neutral are Italy, Poland, South Africa, New Zealand, Scandinavia, and Ireland. Questions remain as to Mexico, with some suggesting that Russia would look to arm them against the US, although personally, I find that unlikely. The country traditionally prefers neutrality, as with most of South America. It's also unclear what stance large parts of Africa, Thailand, Venezuela and India would have, as they have previously had tension with the states. India of course have historic tension with Pakistan, and with the rest of the world fighting, perhaps these two could digress to a war of their own. But there is one group we have yet to discuss. Not a country, but a group of people united under a misguided ideological flag. The Islamic State. ISIS would undoubtedly want to get in on the action, using the chaos to make further gains in the Middle East and to recruit the disenfranchised. As countries focused on fighting one another, I can only imagine ISIS would use their distraction to plot terror. So there we have it, the fighting would take place across the world, with almost everyone in some way dragged into the chaos. And chaos is exactly what it would be. Just to reiterate the sentiment of our previous World War 3 video, the outcome of this war, if it were to happen, would be devastating for everyone and yield no winners. Let's hope everybody can keep their cool and work together towards peaceful solutions, which is the sentiment we would like to end our video with. The extent of the damage would really be dependent on who entered the war, but let's say a worst case scenario develops with North Korea, Russia, Syria, Iran and China against the United States, South Korea, the Ukraine, the United Kingdom, Canada, France, Germany, Japan and Australia. Australia, as well as Israel, Turkey, the United Arab Emirates, with possible intervention from Saudi Arabia and other parts of Europe. The combined military forces of those fighting will cause much destruction. The USA, China and Russia between them have enough in their arsenal to destroy much of the world's civilization. While World War 1 and 2 took years to play out, it's likely that World War 3 would be all over very quickly, but be much more lethal with a vaster scale of damage. It depends who strikes first as to where the damage will fall. If America wanted to, it could pretty much eradicate North Korea, but not without a reasonable fight, especially aimed at the South Koreans. Again, America could cripple Syria, but Russia wouldn't let that happen. Vladimir Putin has previously bragged that he has the power to destroy 
destroy America in half an hour or less. America feels much the same towards the Russians, and has done since the Cold War when President John F. Kennedy laid out his plans for mutually assured destruction. Basically, when the first missiles or bomb is launched by either America, China or Russia, each will have already sent missiles back to assure the perpetrator is just as wounded. What will we be left with? This map, put together by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the National Resources Defense Council, shows the cities most likely to be hit in the states, factoring in reach from Russia, China and possibly North Korea. With much of the United States and Canada destroyed, the devastation would be reflected in all participating countries. Meanwhile, ISIS are sure to have run amok, basking in the devastation and gaining power while the rest of the world suffers. So, how many will die before it's all over? Well, these days we have far more powerful weapons than ever. For example, the atomic bombs that were dropped in Japan were one thing, but these days we have weapons 3,000 times more powerful. This state of the world at the end depends on how many nuclear weapons are used before a truce was called. The damage from just a few could be enough to get countries to strike up peace talks. But in a worst case scenario, both Russia and the US have over 2,000 nuclear war heads, which is enough to wipe out a large chunk of the world's population. In World War II, 75 million people died. If the world went full on nuke war, some estimate as many as 2 billion could die, which seems plausible given the reach of nuclear fallout. Eventually the death toll will be so high and the damage so vast that a truce will have to be called, and while the war may be over, the effects of it will be felt for generations to come. Cancer will be on the rise as nuclear fallout poisons land and many will struggle to survive without clean water or crops. The aftermath of the war would be a war unto itself. There would be economic ruin for all involved. War is as expensive as it is devastating. Countries will be forced to rebuild what they have left, while people feel and seethe from a war that the majority did not want. Families would be broken, lives would be ruined. Of course it wouldn't end there either. With the money needed to rebuild our countries, funds would be cut from science and technology technology, pushing back developments in space, medicine and technological advancement. And what of the environment? Our ozone layer is likely to be damaged and will have undoubted repercussions on the climate. Farming? Crops? Destroyed. Hello there famine. Furthermore, if extremist groups like ISIS were to gain strength in all of the chaos, then the fighting would not be over. Essentially, once you begin fighting, is it ever really over? The trigger of World War 3 would do much damage, and what would ensue would be devastation and one-upmanship until someone decides enough is enough and yields. Who that will be, we just don't know. We do not know who will start it nor end it, but ultimately there are no winners, just losers on a major scale. Billions of people dead, cities crumbled, and everything you enjoyed about your pre-war existence gone. So if I recall correctly, we here on Life's Biggest Questions posed a similar question back then, something along the lines of who would win World War III, with the participants being America and Iran. But before anything played out, a whole new global issue reared its ugly head. COVID-19. This pandemic quickly took over as the news piece that would fascinate folks around the world, and so it did. Talks of a war between these two countries faded away and didn't really seem to come up again. And like I mentioned earlier, other conflicts did go on in the meantime, although none ever reached a level one might compare to a third world war. So what am I saying by bringing up this older topic like this? Well, we'd better be careful while forecasting potential wars, because if we decide that a conflict is going to escalate and then start predicting what would happen, we might just find ourselves in the midst of another brand new pandemic. And after all that time under lockdown, all those social distancing measures taken, all the vaccines developed and distributed, and of course, all the countries out there that are still reeling from the effects of the virus, I don't think anyone wants to start again from scratch. No thank you. So maybe, and this could be a logical stretch a mile long, if we start talking about World War III and it doesn't happen, we could find ourselves fighting against a new viral threat. And if we take that as true, then could we possibly say that World War III would prevent a new virus? See where I'm coming from here? Not really. Yeah, it's a bit of a wild swing, I'll admit. But using what little I learned from elementary school debate class, I'd say the facts check out. Now with that doozy out of the way, let's take a look at the actual event that inspired this video and then delve into the military history of Russia and Britain. 
In an international case of he said, she said, we've watched a very interesting operation play out over the past week or so. On June 23rd, Russia claimed to have shot at a British warship. Moscow said they had warned the ship not to proceed further and doing so would result in warning shots being fired. With no apparent response or course change from the British vessel, shots were indeed fired at the ship and a fighter jet dropped some bombs in the ship's path. Interestingly enough though, Britain denies being shot at. The Ministry of Defense press office tweeted out, no warning shots have been fired at HMS Defender. The Royal Navy ship is conducting innocent passage through Ukrainian territorial waters in accordance with international law. We believe the Russians were undertaking a gunnery exercise in the Black Sea and provided the maritime community with prior warning of their activity. No shots were directed at the HMS Defender and we do not recognize the claim that bombs were dropped in her path. So what's really going on here? Who's telling the truth? Well, according to Philip Ingram, a former UK intelligence officer, Russia likely was just doing training exercises but maybe didn't warn the Brits beforehand. However, they may have seen this as an opportunity to throw their weight around some and claim that these training exercises were actually warning shots. Ingram says that this is in line with their aggressive stance on Ukraine and not out of character. This doesn't really seem to spell out doom and disaster though. It's Russia being Russia, not two countries looking to stir up trouble and start a war. But what if it was? Well, we can look to the long-standing history between Britain and Russia to figure out more. Despite plenty of alliances and rivalries over the years, it seems as though these two nations are not huge fans of each other lately. There was a recent alleged Russian cyber hacking campaign, although Russia denies it and says that Britain does not hold much of a place in their thinking. However, the Brits do indeed say that Russia was behind hostile foreign interference in recent years. Seems like they're in conversations like this a lot. With all this in mind, apparently relations between the two nations are close to frozen, and neither party seems too interested in warming up anytime soon. So if talks of war did crop up, there isn't much either side would commit to in keeping the peace. Although I can't imagine either side actively looking to heighten the stakes. Maybe, after all these years of continued espionage and sabotage, something would happen though. Like I mentioned before, there is a lot of history here. We can look back to when the duo teamed up against Napoleon way back when, or maybe when they became rivals during the Crimean War. How about the time they competed for control over Central Asia in the late 19th century? They were on the same side during the first two world wars, could that be a pattern worth continuing? Or would they come close to fighting again like in the Cold War? There was a point after the Soviet Union dissolved that Russia and Britain seemed to get along quite well, as business and big profits bound them together. But with Russian expats often fleeing to Britain, things couldn't stay golden forever. These two deciding to start a world war would be huge, considering their international influence and power. It would probably start under the guise of a Ukrainian annex, or maybe some more naval tomfoolery. 